Josh Green here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by Lauren Price and Karis Artinstall. Some dates announced for the forthcoming fights. Lauren, obviously, you'll be fighting in a few weeks down in Burring. Karis announced for Bournemouth uh, in a couple of weeks' time. Karis, first of all, your reaction to uh, your fight news? Exciting times. Yeah, it's exciting again to be stepping through the ropes. Only six weeks away now, so I've stayed in camp pretty much because Lauren got a fight date. Um, pretty much imminently after a previous fight, so I got straight back into camp, ticking over. Um, so I'll I'll hit the ground running hard now because I've got a date settled. Um, but yeah, I'm in a really good place, so just sharpen up now and I'll be ready to go in six weeks' time. Excited to be fighting in Bournemouth as well. It's a new destination for me, but I'm excited. Yeah, big card down there, obviously with CBS headlining a fight that he's been after for for years now. To be in a stadium and to be in a another big venue must just be really exciting for you. Yeah, definitely. And it's it's what I enjoy the most as well. Like I, I try and scoop out all the big shows and I'm like I'm pretty much pestering the boxer in Sky, get me on that show, I wanna be on that big show. Um and Chris is Chris is the guy in he down in Bournemouth. He's quite popular down there, so I'm hoping it'll be a cracking turnout. Yeah, certainly. And Lauren, for yourself, over in Birmingham was announced, uh, I can't remember if it was yesterday or the day before, fighting for the inaugural British title in the women's welterweight division. Huge opportunity, and I think there's going to be a lot of eyes on that with it being a, a brand new belt. Yeah, 100%. Um, I had the four, phone call yesterday. I knew, obviously, I was boxing Kirsty anyway, but, you know, um, to have the phone call yesterday to say that we're going to be the first to ever, you know, to, to box for the British title... Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's a complete honour and um, yeah, very proud to obviously add that to my list of uh, historic nights again, I suppose. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Three weeks to go now and looking forward to, to putting on a show and um, yeah, bringing that belt back. Something that often gets criticised in, in women's boxing is the depth of talent there is. Do you believe there's enough depth in the UK uh, and in Britain to have? British belts, especially at Welter? Yeah, 100%. I think we've seen, you know, the last couple of years, um, the women's boxing has definitely improved, got bigger. There's more girls now, obviously. So, yeah, why not? We should just have, you know, the same opportunities as as the men. And um, like I said, I feel honoured, you know, to, to be the first one, you know, boxing for the British title. And, like, hopefully there's there's many more belts to go throughout the weeks. But, yeah, definitely, I think, obviously, the last couple of years, um, the, it's, it's definitely come on leaps and bounds. Mm. You'll obviously want to be moving quickly in your career coming out of the Olympics, but would the idea for you to be defend that belt a few times? or? Um, I don't really know, to be honest. I'll just leave it down to Rob McCracken, wherever he guides me in my career. Um, I never really experienced anything. Obviously, I just for me, my main focus is you know, um, getting this fight, you know, winning this fight now on May the sixth, and then we'll go from there. Um, obviously, I know there's been talk. Obviously, am I gonna be in a world title fight by the end of the year? Um, yeah, maybe, possibly. I don't know. But like I said, that comes down to Rob. Uh, what he decides for me, and whatever he says goes. Hmm. Just moving back to to Karis, obviously Jade Taylor, she's five and zero. Oh, she's got a, a good record and looks very very solid at the level. How much do you know about her? I know she's from up in the northwest, so around your sort of region. Have you ever come come across her before? No, I didn't. Um, I've never heard of her previously. Um, I knew she boxed the girl that I just last boxed, Lindsay Baczynski. I knew them two boxed before, and Jay Taylor come away with a win. She's unbeaten, like you said, so she'll be um, supremely confident, I imagine. She's on a winning streak. She's not tasted um, or experienced defeat before, so um, I'm expecting a good fight. Yeah. And the thing I wanted to touch on with both of you guys is the competitive element, sort of, in the relationship. You mentioned... Obviously, you were you were out there in France when Lauren fought, and you've been waiting for that date to come. Is it just when you see Lauren in the ring? Is it just itching to get out there? Um, not really. No, obviously, like we both said at the start of the year, that we just want momentum and activity this year because obviously 
last year we turned professional and it was a bit of a slow burner for us just not not in our like it was completely out of our hands due to the queen passing unfortunately and other things going on in the background but um the the main thing we both said going into 2023 is we want to be active and we want momentum because that's when you'll see the best of us um we have both agreed not to fight on the same show again unless it's for an extremely good reason but <laughs> We both said decided that we'll box separately, so it works out good that when she boxes, I'm in camp with her, ticking away, keeps me on my A game, and vice versa. Like Lauren fights in three weeks, and then she'll probably come back into camp with me, but she'll just tick over. She won't be flat out training, and then I'll fight, and then we'll have a little bit of time off together. I think after this one, um, and then back back into the gym. Hmm. What are the, the sort of reasons for mixing it up and making sure you're not on the, the same cars? Is it just to make sure there's there's no clashes and you're not in the same sort of headspace each other going into a fight week? Or If you used to fight on the same night as your partner, would you get nervous and your adrenaline go through the roof? <laughs> yeah, that does make sense. Yeah, I think you just, it's just, I think I'd burn... I'd I think it's like fight week as well. Or like you just burn too much mm-hmm. nervous energy, I think. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm already... If I'm fighting, I, I need my energy for my fight. Whereas I feel like if we're both fighting on the same night, I'm burning some of my nervous energy for Lauren as well. Do you know what I mean? So then that's emptying some of my tank and I need that for my fight <laughs> to throw my punches. So, yeah, I think it just worked out better when we are on separate bills. It was mm. nice to experience it together on the Shields and Clarissa card, but... Yeah, I, I think, um, uh, yeah, I feel Savannah, I mean, uh, but yeah, I think it just works out better. And like through fight week and whatnot, I can support Lauren with any nonsense that's going on in the background and vice versa. So, Sure. Um, in terms of moving forward, obviously, you've got big opportunities. In terms of scheduling, is it is it you say it's obviously going to be kept apart? Is that ever going to be an issue, do you think? Or? Is what going to be kept apart? Is what going to be kept apart? Sorry. Oh, um, no. I obviously like like what Kai said. Obviously, is the plan is to box on on separate shows just quite because together. just just quite close together. Obviously, we're in camp together, so maybe like I don't know. I think this one's three weeks apart, and then two yeah. or three weeks apart. Um, would would be ideal, really. Um, but yeah, obviously they've got to be like a good, like Kai said, an extremely good. Uh, reason if we got if we're gonna box on the same card, especially now, uh, we're both you know moving up the rounds and we're gonna be in you know eight ten round fights. Then um, a, a good reason being tag team on misfits. <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of LGBT representation within a sport, you guys are obviously really high profile uh, within the sport of boxing. How much does that? representation matters to you and how proud of you of, of how you represent yourselves not just individually but as a couple as well yeah obviously um i just had this conversation with someone else now about like for me i don't really look at it like that um i was all like i i suppose myself and caris you know we've, we've been in the gb set up now we've been together you know going on four years and we've never been treated any differently or you know so for us it's just I suppose the normal normal way we say um so yeah it's, it's obviously it's hard to comment on that but I know obviously people do have you know it's discrimination and they have you know people take the like, how can I say it the some people have an hard time with it don't they or maybe it's because some people don't feel comfortable or they're just not surrounded by the kind of people we're surrounded by. Like in the GB boxing gym and like the boxer stable in Sky Sports, like we're very welcome. Nobody looks at us differently. Nobody separates us. Like we're not we're not categorized for being gay. Like we're literally just Lauren Price, Carrie Sartre's door, the power couple. Like there's there's no bad words said about us. Yeah, don't get me wrong, you get the bad comment on social media, but who, who the fuck are they like? Do you know what I mean? Who are they to say anything about my life or my relationship anyway? I'm happy. Lauren's happy. So we don't overthink it. We just go about our day-to-day life. And that's it, really. Like, we're both happy. And the ones that we love are happy. And are on, like we've got our backs, then 
there's, there's nothing really else that matters on the outside world. Yeah, absolutely. Um, wanted to get quickly, quickly get your thoughts on a couple other fights coming up. The first being Ellie Scottney, who was originally scheduled to fight on that Katie Taylor card. We know, unfortunately, uh, that had to be pulled for re reasons which were um, released on social media. Um, first of all, can you sort of sympathise with what Ellie is feeling there? It's obviously a huge opportunity to fight on a Katie Taylor card. Yeah, I can kind of see it off. I don't know the ins and outs. I don't really know exactly what's going on behind closed doors. But I think Ellie's idol, so of course that's her dream to fight on her undercard and let alone it be for a world title as well. Like, do you know what I mean? What a night that would have been for her. But then I can also see it on Chantal Cameron's side. Like, it's the biggest night of her career. She wants, obviously, she needs to focus on herself. She don't want any, like, I, I feel for both of them, but like I said, I don't know the ins and outs, so I, I just I can't really judge yet what's going on sort of thing. I just wish them both the best. Yeah, and I'd like to get both of your thoughts on that fight between Katie Taylor and Chantel Cameron. Katie, obviously, and beating as is Chantel, but I think lots of people will be looking at Chantel as probably one of the biggest challenges that, that Katie has faced. Yeah, I I agree with that most definitely. Um, I think it's going to be a great fight, um, uh, not just for female boxing but boxing in general. And you know, it's it's an odd one to call because obviously Katie Taylor, she's a fantastic boxer. What she's done in her career, what she's done for for sport is amazing. But you know, I've said for you know a couple of years now. I think obviously if anyone's going to test her and you know get well beat her. I think Chantel has, has definitely got, well, the way her, her style and thing, she, she could be the girl to do it. Um, I think, it's, like I said, it's going to be a fantastic fight. I think, obviously, with it being in, in Ireland and that as well, I don't really know. I can't I can't even call it yet. But still, I, I don't know what to say, but um, I'm going to sit on the fence with it because I, I don't know. But I, I believe that, obviously, it is definitely going to be Katie Taylor's toughest test. Karis, you're not going to sit on the fence, are you? Yeah, I am going to sit on the fence. <laughs> um, I mean, uh, I don't know. Like, I'd, I'd love Chantal to do it, but it's a big call. Like, Katie Taylor, she's, she, her boxing ability is very, very good. Her boxing IQ is extremely good. Um, Chantal has got the tools uh, to get the win. I suppose it just... Whoever turns up on the day on their A game, I suppose. But um, Katie Taylor, she her last fight was a was a tough fight against Amanda Serrano as well. So that might have taken a little bit out of her. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Let me ask you: Who do you think? I think I'd say I'd edge towards Katie Taylor, but uh, I'd say you guys are more of an expert than me. So, so you're sitting on the fence. If I was picking anybody, I'd be picking Katie Taylor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I'm like, one minute I'm saying Katie Taylor, but then, like, a thought will come over me and I'm like, oh, she was in a tough fight last time and it might have taken a bit out of her and this could change Chantel's life. Is she just going to give it that little bit extra sort of thing? And she's fresh, she's young. And then I'm like, oh, but Katie Taylor's, like, she's one of a kind, isn't she? Like, she's incredible. So I'm like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I appreciate it. It's a very tough one. It's going to be both uh, um, styles. So I think it's going to gel really nicely. So it's going to be a fantastic fight. Certainly is. Well, thank you very much for your time, guys. Really appreciate it. And uh, best of luck in your upcoming fights. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you.